Hello, and welcome St. Paul family, friends, and special guests. Thank you for joining our worship experience today. To our virtual partners and St. Paul family, welcome to the historic St. Paul United Methodist Church downtown, where we are the soul of the Arts District. We have an awesome worship experience planned for you today. So get comfortable because you are in for a mighty experience. Make sure you like, share, and take someone to log on. Now, enjoy worship and meet me in the comments. Good morning, St. Paul, and a special hello to our guests and friends. Here's news and information you can use for this week that can help you get connected and grow right here at St. Paul. St. Paul family and friends, you are invited to participate in the Project Unity Speaker Series featuring our very own Richard G. Stewart Jr. to discuss his story and the story of other African Americans in the military and military communities just like him. Join us as we continue to celebrate veterans for their service, Tuesday, November 30th at 5.30 on Zoom. Contact Charlene at projectunity.net to register. The holidays are quickly approaching and Meals on Wheels needs volunteers to deliver meals throughout the Dallas Metroplex. Please volunteer at volunteer.vnatexas.org to register. Also, Meals on Wheels is looking to hire drivers to deliver meals throughout the Dallas County also. If you'd like to be hired, contact Aaron Ritchie at 469-475-8696. We look forward to everyone participating in our upcoming Advent Bible study using Pastor Olu Brown's book titled Hope, an Advent Journal. Bible study sessions are 7 p.m. via Zoom. The first study starts Tuesday, November the 30th, and all other studies after that will be each Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please remember to continue supporting the children and youth by donating socks for veterans during this month. A donation box is available in the Welcome Center. Thank you so much for your support. The St. Paul Social Justice Ministry, along with pastors and leaders from throughout the North Texas Conference, enjoyed an evening attending a conversation with Stacey Abrams. Thanks to Dr. Ron Henderson, we were able to use this opportunity to discuss ways in which our congregations and social justice teams could partner together to advocate and impact the lives of those impacted by injustices. Mary, did you know that your baby Boy, will one day walk on water. Mary, did you know? The concert truck is coming back to St. Paul for a night of hope for the holidays. Say the date and make plans to come out at 6 p.m. Sunday, December 5th for an evening filled with joy and great music in partnership with our friends from the Dallas Symphony Orchestra and the Arts District. Bring your lawn chairs or just stay in your car to enjoy the sounds from the comfort of your radio. Whatever your pleasure, just join us for a night of hope, Sunday, December 5th at 6 p.m. Come early to secure your spot. Dr. Faison and the St. Paul staff would like to wish you and your family a safe and happy Thanksgiving. To learn more about the happenings at St. Paul, stay connected with us by signing up for our weekly e-blast and monthly church newsletters, liking us on Facebook or through our website.
2 Corinthians 9.11 says, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. You know, friends, there is a deep connection between wealth and opportunity. Every dollar that passes through our hands is a transfer of power. And how we use that power is something that shapes us for better or worse. One of the ways God turns us into more generous, thankful, and joyful people is by blessing us with money so that we can give it back to the kingdom and result in thanksgiving to God. Will you join me today in becoming a thankful people by giving back to the kingdom? Would you go to SPUMCD.org as the Lord leads and select one of the ways to give? May God bless you today as you give. Another week of us following right into the same thing from call to worship and to praise and worship. <laughs> God is truly something else, isn't he? We want to introduce a new song. But if we want everybody to just say this. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Come on, say that with us. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of, all of my worship. Receive my, receive my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Let's say that one more time. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of, all of my worship. My worship, all of my worship. All right, you, Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me.
worship you. Let's say that in unison, and I will not. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am. Father, we come to you today just thanking you for the opportunity to gather in prayer. We thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have already done 
and we look forward to what you are getting ready to do. We pray, Lord God, for those who are sick, Lord God, who are sick with disease, Lord God, who are sick with any kind of infirmity, Lord God. We just ask for your Jehovah Rapha, for your healing power to touch them in the name of Jesus. We also pray for those, Lord, who are grieving. Father, there is so much loss going on right now, but God, we want to thank you for being the comforter that you promised you would be. We thank you, Lord, even in the midst of their lament, and we pray in the name of Jesus that they will feel your presence. Oh God, we are praying for all of those, Lord God, who are standing in need, Lord God, who just need a touch from you. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you let them know that you are with them, that you have never left them, that you don't plan on leaving them, <laughs> and that you will make everything work. Well, oh God, we love you and we just thank you. We thank you for the preach word. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in the midst of it all. Lord, we love you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. My scripture this morning comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 6 through 10. New Revised Standard Version. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up in your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. change, a change has come over me, he changed my
Friends, good morning. God bless you this morning. I want to invite you now to pray with me as we prepare our hearts for our time together this morning in God's Word. Will you receive this as your prayer? Great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day forever faithful towards me always providing for me great is your mercy towards me great is your grace God, we thank you today for your mercy and your grace. We thank you today for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that are new to us each and every day. God, even in this weary and troubled world, in this world where it seems justice is constantly denied your people, God, we yet trust and hope and believe in you and ask that you strengthen us, O oh God, for the days ahead, for the work ahead, that you strengthen us now to receive your word, that we might be empowered and enriched and enlivened and transformed and healed and comforted and made new. God, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. It, the story is told of the roof of a church that was falling in. And so the members of this church decided to get together and hold regular prayer meetings in the fellowship hall to pray for resources, to pray for answers, to pray for God to move. Well, there was an older man in the church who was uh, very tight with his money. He had a lot of money, but he was very tight with his money. And he would always sit at the back of the fellowship hall and he would sneak out right before the collection plate came around. Well, one Sunday he got held up talking to the pastor and he was unable to sit in the back of the fellowship hall and he was forced to sit down front. And during the prayer meeting, as the saints of God prayed, a piece of the roof fell and hit him on the head. Well, feeling like God was speaking to him, the man stood up and said, I will give a thousand dollars. Then a loud voice came from the back of the church, very loudly saying, hit him again, Lord. <laughs> you know, friends, giving can be a touchy topic, uh, especially sometimes in the church. It is challenging for pastors and for leaders to encourage or motivate, uh, to motivate people, to even motivate believers to give. Well, today we are coming to the conclusion of our sermon series, We Give. And, it, and this series has been about giving to God. In this season of Thanksgiving, we've been taking the time to reflect and to think and to remember uh, of the goodness of God. We've been giving God our praise. We talked about that. We talked about giving God our service. And today we're talking about giving God our gifts. Uh, you had to know sooner or later we were going to have to come around to talking about giving to God our financial gifts because we understand that our giving must include our money. And in our text, Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He writes to encourage them to motivate their giving. I'm going to back up a little bit with what he says in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 4. He's raising an offering for the poor Christians in Jerusalem and giving instructions to the church. And he says in 1 Corinthians 16, he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, you should follow the directions that I gave to the churches of Galatia. On the first day of every week, each of you is to put aside and save whatever extra you can so that collections need not be taken when I come. And then later in this passage in verse 31, he says, when I arrive, I will send any whom you approve with a letter to take your gift to Jerusalem. He's giving them instructions on how to help out some of the other ministries of the other churches that were not doing as well as the church at Corinth. And he had asked the church there to commit to giving regularly. And the Corinthian church had started out giving well, but they had fallen off in their commitment. Because let's face it, sometimes we fall off in our commitments, don't we? Sometimes it just happens. I want you to know today you may have fallen, but you can get up. Amen, somebody. You may have fallen in your commitment in giving. You may have fallen in your commitment in worship. You may have fallen in your commitment in just spending time in God's word. But I want you to know if you've fallen today, you can get up. 
And Paul writes uh, in 2 Corinthians 8, the text that was read in your hearing, he, he writes these words to encourage uh, the Corinthian church and to remind them of, of their commitment. He says, I want you to know about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. He said, there's something going on in Macedonia. There's a powerful move of God because during a se severe ordeal of affliction they were going through it they were having struggles he said but yet their abundant joy and extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity that almost doesn't make sense does it he says their abundant joy and their extreme poverty together equal an overflow of generosity wait what that's like saying two plus two equals five something doesn't quite add up you see, this church has been going through it. I don't know what the difficulty was, and Paul doesn't say. It may have been a lot of their members got laid off. Perhaps the bottom of the economy dropped out. Maybe they were in the grip of a pandemic. Amen, somebody. But whatever it was, they experienced, the text says, extreme poverty. I mean, it was painful and it was hurtful. But their response is amazing because even in their difficult situation, they responded to, what, to their ordeal with generosity. They gave voluntarily, and they gave beyond their means. He says they had abundance of joy. And you cannot help but wonder, how is this possible? Paul says it's because of the grace of God. There was an overflow of grace in their lives. And that brings me to the first thing I want to share with us this morning. We give, friends, as a response to God's grace. When we have experienced God's grace, when we begin to truly get a glimpse and let it sink in that we have received such grace, then giving becomes a natural response. When we begin to, to think of the depths, the Bible says, of the mercy and the grace of God, then no one has to beg you to give. No one has to force you to give. You, you cannot help but give. Because you understand that every day you wake up is grace. Every time you eat a meal, that's grace. Every breath that we breathe is grace. Being able to be in fellowship and relationship with God is grace. And, and I don't believe it's not that we, we haven't experienced grace. It's just we don't always acknowledge grace. And we can get kind of common with God's grace. Like, like it's just supposed to be there. Sometimes, especially if we've been in the church a long time or, or Christians for a long time, we are no longer wowed by the grace of God. I don't know about you, but the grace of God can still wow me. The grace of God still takes me by surprise. It still takes my breath away. It still amazes me. Hmm? Friends, it is nothing less than miraculous that we have been restored, that we have been redeemed, that we have been forgiven, that we have been filled by the Holy Spirit, that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Because where sin abounded, the Bible says, grace abounded much more. Galatians 4, 4 says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. You ought to slap yourself this morning and say, I've been adopted. Uh huh. In other words, friends, at the right time, just in the nick of time, because God's always on time. God sent Jesus to save us when we couldn't save ourselves, to heal us when we couldn't heal ourselves to redeem us when we could not redeem ourselves, to forgive us when we couldn't forgive ourselves by grace. The Bible says you have been saved. And we give as our response to that magnificent grace. Because when we've experienced God's grace, we, we want to show appreciation for it. We, we want to show that we understand that it was nothing but God's grace. You see, giving wasn't a burden for the Macedonian church. It was a joy because they understood what it meant to be recipients of God's grace. And they were filled with joy. And this joy overflowed into giving. When you're filled with joy, you want to give. You want to respond. They could not help but respond because grace calls for friends a response. Then we give friends because we are in a relationship with God. The text says that they gave themselves first to the Lord. They were able to respond so magnificently to God's grace in recognition of that relationship with God. They gave themselves first to the Lord. They gave willingly and they gave sacrificially. Amen, somebody. You know, giving is not always convenient or easy. Sometimes giving is going to call for something more from us. 
You know, they, 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 they gave, to, no one even had to, to, to ask them to give. They, you know, we look at our situations and we decide whether or not we can give. We, we give based on our circumstances. The Macedonian church disregarded their extreme poverty and they gave anyhow. Huh? Can we grow to the point where we give anyhow, where we serve anyhow, where we love anyhow, where we forgive anyhow, regardless of what's going on in our lives because we are in a relationship with God because we have been restored through Jesus Christ because we can claim to be the people of God can we give anyhow Paul says they beg for the privilege. They beg for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. They beg to be able to serve the other believers through their giving. And that's what we need to grasp today, friends, that we give, when we give, we also serve others. We, our, our giving goes to serve ministry that goes sometimes to other believers, sometimes to non-believers. It spills over into the world. They, they had a different perspective. They did not view their giving as an obligation or a burden, but a privilege mm, and a joy. Amen, somebody. Can you honestly say this morning that your giving is a privilege and a joy? And they were able to do this, friends, because they gave themselves first to the Lord. Could it be that we have not been able to see our giving as a privilege and a joy because we have not truly given ourselves to the Lord or given every area of our lives to the Lord? Our giving is evident that we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. What does your giving say about your relationship with God? You see, when we fully commit ourselves to the Lord, then we are able to commit everything else, everything else, everything else in our lives. When the Lord has our heart, friends, everything else follows. Don't tell me how much you love the Lord and you still tip in God and you know you could do better. I hear you, though. You say, Pre preacher, I love God. There's people I have a problem with. There's preachers I don't trust. Amen, somebody. I hear that, and I get it, and there are good reasons for it because there are churches that have failed to do what is right. There are pastors that have broken trust. That is real, but may I suggest to you this morning that there are plenty of churches and plenty of pastors that operate with integrity and seek to do God's will, so it is incumbent upon you to find one. No excuses. Because God's been too good. God's been too faithful. God's made a way. God's preserved you too many times. And most of all, because God is worthy. God has given God's son. And friends, if we can believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried and he rose from the dead, surely we can believe that we can trust God, that God will provide for us, that we can trust God's care for us. Surely we can give in response to God's loving kindness, regardless of the circumstances. I'm not suggesting that you may not have to adjust your giving. I know things happen, but I'm suggesting that God should always be a priority in our giving. You know, it's been said that there are three kinds of givers, the rock, the sponge and the honeycomb. Amen, somebody. To get anything out of a rock, you must hammer it. And then you only get chips and sparks. To get anything out of a sponge, you got to squeeze it hard because the more pressure you use, the more you'll get. But the honeycomb just overflows with its own sweetness. Something's always coming out of it. Perhaps that that's what it means to excel in the grace of giving. There's something sweet always coming from your life because you understand that you've received grace and you are in this relationship with God by grace and so so you overflow and I want to invite you this morning to get in where you fit in are you the rock uh-huh are you the sponge or are you the honeycomb friends we give as part of our responsibility to the body of Christ this last thing I want to share. We give as part of our responsibility to the body of Christ. The Macedonians took seriously their responsibility as believers to provide for the ministry of the church. And they begged for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. Can you imagine folk begging to give instead of begging folk to give? The church at Corinth, you see, was a great church. It was a flagship church, if you will, but they have fallen off in their giving. And Paul is trying to encourage them again. He says, you excel in everything. You excel in faith and speech and knowledge. You excel in everything else. You need to excel in your giving. God is calling us to excel in our giving, to be excellent in our giving. Paul was saying to them, if this poor church can give so extravagantly and they have so little, 
surely as blessed as you are, surely as much as you have, surely as good as God has been to you, you are able to do the same. You know, friends, for those of us who are United Methodists, we become a member of the church. Our membership vows say that we will support the church with our prayers, with our presence, with our gifts. Amen, somebody. That means our, our monetary contributions. It is a commitment that we make as members of the body of Christ in the United Methodist Church. But I want to acknowledge it is a commitment that it can be challenging to keep at times. And, you know, we can read this text as if it was easy for the Macedonian church. But I don't believe that was the case. Because I want to acknowledge today that sometimes giving is painful. I know that God loves cheerful and grateful givers. But giving, friends, we have to acknowledge is costly. You know, when Jesus offered his life up for us, it was painful. The word says he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. It was costly. It was painful to be betrayed by those closest to him. It was painful suffering in the garden. It was, it was painful uh, to, to have the, the soldiers spit on him. And it was painful being nailed to a cross. You see, salvation is free, but it wasn't cheap. It costs. To give. Jesus observed the giving of the poor widow in Mark 12 and he said this to his disciples. He said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything that she had. Mother Teresa said, if you do not give, Mother Teresa said, if you give what you do not need, it isn't giving. Friends, what I'm suggesting is that sometimes we should need what we give. Amen, somebody. We ought to give kindness when we need it. We ought to give compassion when we need it. We ought to give grace when we need it. Uh huh. We ought to give love and understanding when we need it. And there are times, friends, when we give our gifts and our money even when we need it. Because love pays the price and love endures the pain of giving. You see, we understand this when it comes to our children. We will do without them. We will make sacrifices for their need because we love them. Paul says, I don't say this to you as a command. He says, I'm testing the genuineness of your love. I want to see if your love is real. You talking a, a good love game, but are you going to walk the love walk? Because you can't give, with, you can't love without giving. You cannot love unless you give. And our primary reason for giving our gifts to the Lord, friends, is just because we love him. Amen, somebody. Can you say this morning that you give just because you love the Lord? Not because the preacher is preaching about giving. Not, not because you want a tax right off. Uh -huh. Not because you'll feel guilty if you don't. But just because you love the Lord. Verse 9, he's, Paul writes, he says, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake and for my sake, he became poor so that by his poverty, you might become rich. Friends, we give as a loving response to the gospel, to the good news. We give because we love Jesus. We give because Jesus Christ gave himself for us. We give because we love him. We give because he's worthy. You see, it doesn't matter if gas prices go up. We give because we love him. It doesn't matter if times get tight. I've still got to give because I love him. My giving doesn't waver uh, if the economy wavers. It is that deep and it's that real because when the full of time had come when I needed a savior, when I needed a redeemer, when I needed forgiveness, when I needed a friend, when I needed a way maker, when I needed redemption, when I was seeking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore. I give because he loves me. I give because I'm grateful. I give because he suffered for me. I give because he shed his blood for me. I give because he died for me. I give because he was buried for me. And I give because he was raised for me. Oh, how I love Jesus. I give because he first loved me. We give first and foremost just because we love him. <laughs> because he's so faithful. Because he's so good. Because grace is so amazing because we have been transformed, because we have been saved from death to life. That's what should motivate our giving. And so it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. 
And I'm not suggesting you don't take care of your needs. I'm suggesting that we put the Lord first. That if we can't tithe, we, we, we put God first. We give first and foremost to the Lord. Because that is saying, God, I trust you first and foremost. I believe you first and foremost. And I love you first and foremost. Maybe today you need to start by giving your heart to the Lord. Perhaps you don't even, can't really even hear a sermon about giving because the first thing you need to do is give yourself. Uh, we want to invite you to do that today. Maybe you're not connected to a church and you'd like to have a church where you can give with confidence. We'd like to share with you about connecting with St. Paul or connecting with a church where you feel that God is leading you. Or perhaps you need prayer. You want to pray about, about your giving. You've had a lot of uh, uh, thinking about it that may or may not have been uh, the right thinking or you've been just struggling with the whole concept. And I'd love to pray with you and talk with you more about it. Whatever your need is, would you reach out to me at lfason at spumcd.net. I'd love to connect you with Jesus, connect you with the church. I'd love to connect with you in prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you have an awesome and safe uh, Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week uh, in, our, in our online virtual worship experience. What an awesome worship experience. Remember to stay connected to St. Paul UMC. We send out weekly e-blasts and text messages to keep you informed. And you can also like the St. Paul UMC Dallas Facebook page. Have a great week. See you next week.